Okay, if you can hear me, please type yes in the um, chat box. So we're sure that we have sounds fantastic. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay, welcome everybody. It is 10 o'clock Pacific time. And um, as you're joining us, feel free to put your name and your, where you're dialing in from in our chat, in the chat, and we will do our best to um, monitor that chat box. I wanna welcome you to our very first Monday Mentoring Minutes. Um, we're here to start off to talk about mentoring in times of crisis and uncertainty. And I wanna welcome our very special first guest, who is the founder of Center for Mentoring Excellence, Dr. Lois Zachary. She's also the author of seven books on mentoring, including The Mentor's Guide, The Mentee's Guide, Creating a Mentoring Culture, Starting Strong, which she wrote with our colleague, Marie Fischler. And our latest book, which just came out a month or so ago, um, which due to a virtual, the virtual screen, oh, there we go, Bridging Differences for Better Mentoring, which she and I wrote together. So um, as uh, the other distinction that I have is to be her daughter. So um, you'll excuse me as I slip from Lois to mom occasionally throughout the course of this broadcast. Lois, welcome, we're happy to have you. Lisa, daughter, I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> Wonderful to be here with you. Wonderful. Well, we're gonna to talk today about mentoring in a time of crisis and uncertainty. And if you have questions, you can type them in the chat. We will try to get to them. Um, again, please bear with us as we're learning the new uh, technology of Zoom and Facebook Live. But in the meantime, one question we've been getting a lot from a lot of people who um, read our blogs and our books and our, a lot of our clients is, what is the importance of mentoring right now? So what Lisa, are your thoughts I'm glad, on that? I'm glad to, that you asked. I think that mentoring is more important now than ever before. We're finding ourselves in not uh, not social distancing, but really physical distancing. And what we need more than ever is social connection. It's, it's really been a time of disruption, disruption from work, colleagues that we're used to talking to or that we were used to being with, we're isolated from them physically. People are family members, friends. So it's a time of, of uncertainty. And when we're used to bouncing things off people, having water cooler conversations, it's a whole new thing to have to get used to. But what's really important is to have that social connection. And I think virtual opportunities such as this are just perfect in terms of at least keeping the face in front of you. I think also, you know, we say we never stop learning. And for so long, we have thought that all our, our learning takes place, you know, in a training room. And with technology improving now, and so much more capability, as you were saying, Lisa, with Zoom and with Facebook Live, it's going to present many more opportunities for us. So, you know, Lisa and I just um, wrote an op-ed and in the op-ed, what we said is someday is now. And I truly believe someday is now. So often we say, I'm gonna take care of this someday. I'm gonna take care of this someday. What a great opportunity to take care of ourselves and to use this time for our own growth and development. Yeah, that's such a great point. There's one, a couple things that you said that I want to just highlight. One is the use of the term physical distancing. We talk so much about social distancing. And the problem with that term is what we need now is the social connection. And really what we're experiencing is a physical disconnection that we can overcome with social connection. There's a really important question that just came in. Um, so can we, can you help provide some suggestions on how to encourage mentoring during this time? Lois, your thoughts first, and then I'll share mine. How to encourage it. I think first is, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure whether the question is coming from encourage it in a workplace setting or to encourage it. I would say, I just want to encourage you to do it. Um, Techn again, technology will help you reach out. 
Uh, but the first thing that you have to do is you have to be prepared. If you're going to be engaged in mentoring, you have to have taken the time to ready yourself and to think about what you want to learn and who you want to travel that road with you. And what are the attributes yeah, that's a, that person needs? Yeah, that's the, what are the attributes? That's a really important point. I think in the workplace context, uh, here's, here's something to think about. Um, uh, th and thank you to Megan who asked the question. Welcome, Megan. Megan. Um, you know, part of it is as, as somebody in the workplace to encourage your leaders to reach out to mentor others and to encourage this as a time to focus on development. It's a really important time when people are home to continue to build culture in the organization. And there's a great message to be had by sharing with your leaders that it is the time to focus on development and encouraging people to do that. And then reaching out and having mentoring moments, even if you don't have an ongoing mentoring relationship, asking what people need to focus on their development and then finding ways to provide that. And for mentees to encourage them to think about what it is that they've always wanted to learn and provide a gateway for them to do that as well. Well, I think also- Any thoughts the, on that? Yeah, uh, I think also um, the idea of self-reflection is really important. I mean, we, it's, it's something that we put always back burner or some of us always back burner it. But the idea is to really sit down and instead of looking at somebody else, look at yourself, look internally and really think about what is it that I'm really good at and what is it that I really like doing and see if you can figure out where those pieces come together because that will help you figure out who you need uh, and what kind of mentor you may need to help you on your journey. Absolutely. There's another really interesting question that came in about how does mentoring navigate into grief? I think, you know, if I just, to, yeah, just to frame that up, you know, one of the things that we're re I'm reading a lot about now is that this emotion that so many of us are feeling that we can't put our hands on, it's not quite sadness, it's not quite fear, it's really grief of a loss for the life that we once had and the fear of the life that we're gonna have. So how as a mentor um, or as a mentee, can you navigate into that in your mentoring relationship? Well, I think one of the things, Lisa, is just that connection to find out, to touch base with somebody. How are you, how are you feeling? What's come up for you to just to be there? Mentoring, mentors can provide a wonderful sounding board. And again, mentoring is a partnership. So, and we know that mentors learn as much and gain as much as mentees, to have the conversation and to make that an authentic conversation. What, it is, that you, what is it that you're really feeling? I'm not talking about going into, into therapy here. What I'm really talking about is touching base with the person and understanding where they're at because that is gonna affect what the conversation is and how much or what you can talk about. Yeah, there's a great exercise about how are you? How are you really? And how are you really, really? And it's, uh, it's, it almost sounds silly in the retelling of it, but really getting deeper um, as a mentor and asking that question. And the key is also sharing, because if you're only asking and you're not sharing, you're not setting the ground for vulnerability and that kind of discussion. So that's also really, really important to navigate. And the skill in mentoring when you're talking about grief is not just the openness and the trust, but it's also the listening skill. And really not trying to solve the grief, but listening to the grief. And it's really important, I think what Lois said, is not going into therapy. We're not talking about therapy. We're talking about finding a way for connection. And that's really also significant. So Another question is, you know, there's, there's millions of people now who have been laid off or furloughed or who are facing real job uncertainty. Can you talk a little bit about um, what the role of mentoring is for those folks, both as mentee and maybe even as mentor? Well, I think the first thing is uh, mentoring can help, but only if you're willing to do the work. So it's not just coming together and letting things happen. There's work involved in mentoring. 
So you have to be prepared. You have to think about what your role is in the relationship. You have to, to um, talk about what the role of your mentoring partner is going to be. It's a great time to use your uh, mentoring partner as a sounding board as you consider different kinds of options. Um, mentors, it's a great time for you to use those skills and those talents that you have to help somebody else, to elevate somebody else, to deep, help somebody deepen their own, own um, thinking, and to ask the kinds of questions that they wouldn't be able to necessarily ask themselves. So I think that you have to um, really be willing to roll up your sleeves. You have to be willing to do the work. And yes, a mentor can help in a situation where you're laid off. Absolutely. And, you know, mentoring is really about expo. It's about many things, but it's also about helping a mentee increase exposure, which is really, really important in a time of job uncertainty. I want to also point out that it is not essential that as a mentee, you know where your next move is. That's something that you can help uncover in the mentoring process. Don't let that stop you from thinking about what you're looking for in a mentor and in general, what your desired learning outcome is. You don't have to know specifically what the goal is, but it really can help in uh, when you're laid off. Lois, I see you have something I'm else. I'm thinking that this, we need to reframe this as an opportunity, the time as an opportunity right here. And it may be that you were laid off, but you may be somebody who was thinking that the job that you're in was not for you anyhow. So to just reframe this opportunity and to try and figure out what would be the best way for you to use your talent, to use your time, and to, to find something, find a space, a workspace, a workplace, a work situation that you really love. And really, That's really gives you juice. Advice. Yeah. Great advice. And an excellent question that came in from Michelle. What are some nuances for picking up relevant cultural influences and issues that result from working with underrepresented students virtually. So thinking about these cultural differences, but how do you pick those up in a virtual mentoring setting? Do you have thoughts on that? I think you come to mentoring with curiosity and ask questions, don't make assumptions. You know, you might say, I know how it is for me, but tell me about your experience. Tell me about your journey. What got you to where you are today? Give me, if you would, share a little bit of your background with me. Uh, let's get to know each other first before we take a deep dive into mentoring, which I just want to relate to another point. So many times people just jump into what they think is mentoring and doing the work and accomplishing the goal and developing the goal and never get to know each other. So what happens is they really don't know who they are mentoring. So who has two components? Who is you and who is me? Yeah, uh, I love that. There, the other piece that I would say is, you know, Michelle, it's such an important question because so often when we're face to face, we can pick up on tone, just sort of this energy that's in the room and that kind of thing that is much harder when you're on video. So what I like to do is I like to just call it out, particularly when you're dealing across cultures is to say, um, you know, it's, it's hard for me to pick up on um, some of the things that I might get when we're in person when we're on Zoom. So if I, if I have your permission, I'd love to just ask you and, you, you know, if your voice drops off or um, uh, if I'm picking up on some body language, I might call it out more than we do uh, when we're live and in live because I want to, I'm curious about it. And it's really taking that step of curiosity that Lois talked about and going the next step further of calling it out so that you can really address it. We actually talk about this in our book. Um, we have this model of um, lean forward, learn and leverage. And it's really knowing what your own sort of cultural mannerisms and your cultural preferences and your cultural viewpoint are, and then noticing when there might be a difference and then creating that relationship where you can talk about it. When you do that call out that I just mentioned, it's really important that you invite your mentee, if you're a mentor, to do the same thing. 
right? So that you're really having that um, exchange as well. Um, there's another question that I don't know how I would answer, Lois, but you may have an answer for. Uh, Michelle asked, what are the options for engaging research activities to build competencies in education or social behavioral science research? Do you have thoughts on that? I'm not really specifically clear on the question. If I'm, uh, let me just make something up and, and, and maybe it'll fly. Uh, <laughs> and Michelle, let uh, us know in the comments if, 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 if you okay. need some, something different. The fact that we're doing this virtually means that we can use virtual resources. We can tap into research. We can tap into um, other resources out there and we can do this with multiple, multiple sites and multiple researchers and put these things up online and look at them, evaluate them, talk about them together and be sure that we're on the same page. So maybe it's a way of working together and um, utilizing the resources in that particular time and moment. So I made that up. Let me hear from you if, it, if whether or not that was the question. <laughs> I think it's also, you know, it actually, um, that really dovetails nicely with the next question that came in, which is how do we use screen share when you're doing virtual, virtually mentoring? And that might be a really nice way to help particularly young um, uh, colleagues in your department or graduate students or what have you learn about research is to share your screen and go through whatever, uh, you know, help them lead them through research protocol that way. The amazing thing about technology, you know, I'm just learning this, I've been using Zoom for a very long time, but I also am learning about Microsoft Whiteboard and Loom, all of which are great technologies to, to be able to enhance your mentoring as you do that virtually. So those resources again are Loom, L-O-O-M, which is you can record a video as you go through a document or when you're on Zoom, Z-O-O-M, you can screen share uh, and really collaborate that way as well. So I'd like to just add a point, Lisa, and that is we assume that everybody knows how to use Zoom and that everybody has Zoom. We assume that everybody knows how to use Facebook. So, I think one of the questions in getting to know your mentee and to facilitating or being engaged in a mentoring relationship is to find out if, what people's experience is with it, whether you're a mentor or a mentee. Many times mentees teach mentors about technology and how to use this. But really, yeah. it could be a cultural issue. It could be an exposure issue, but level the playing field that way. 100%. I think, it, it, you know, I just want to go back to one point we started to talk about, which is this idea of um, creating a space to talk about how you are really, um, without going into, um, you know, therapy, but and also staying constructive. And, you know, we often talk about, um, Lois, you and I do this all the time in our work together about talking about balancing the learning and balancing the relationship. And this is a time where you may have to lean a little bit more towards the relationship so that you can get to the learning. Don't shy away from honoring how people really are because otherwise they may not be able to be fully present for the learning. And so how, how you encourage that is really to equip, I, I would say this goes back to Megan's question, if you are an organizational uh, program administrator, somebody who's responsible for mentoring in your organization, now is a great time to be in touch with your senior leaders and encourage them to reach out to their people and to find mentors and to mentor others by leading that way and demonstrating the behavior that we just talked about. Um, okay, so I wanna um, uh, just um, ask this question. If somebody has a mentoring relationship now, how do they engage, re-engage in their mentoring relationship during this time? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think of the three R's, reach out, reconnect and refresh. So mm. acknowledge the reality of the present time. And we know that 
people are hurting. And, and as we said before, that's important. Really important is to keep your relationship moving forward. So if you're engaged in a mentoring relationship, to continually say, you know, to, to be explicit about it, we want to keep this mentoring relationship moving forward. What are some things that we can do? It's also a time to revisit the mentoring agreements that you've had because the frequency may change of the mentoring relationship. Um, actually, what you're going to focus on may have changed because it may be that Reality speaking, you may be out of a job. And so instead of skills to enhance that job, you may be focusing on something else. But it's really to renegotiate the how, re-examine what your goals are and the way in which you're gonna move mentoring forward. Set up a regular contact schedule. That's way, one way to keep it moving forward. I just had a meeting with one of my mentees and we talked about the fact that there was so much going on right now, children at home, how is the mentoring going to go forward? And I said, I really want to keep it moving, but I want to make sure that it's, that it's working for you. Do you still want to continue moving on this? Do you have the bandwidth to make that happen? So really important and it may not be meeting every week it may be once a month but there are tasks that you can do continuously so you want to check in and make sure okay we agreed that you would do x y and z between now and the next time how's that working for you yeah i love that the three r's so they are revisit refresh and what was the third one no, you came made up a new one, but that's okay. Um, where okay. I start to reach out, reconnect, and refresh. Right, excellent. And I would say so that two R's, the goals are still relevant and realistic, right? So do those three things to make sure that what you're working on are still relevant and realistic. Those are those are um, great, really great points. Um, all right. So Lois, three things that people can do right now to um, encourage and enhance their mentoring efforts in this time of uncertainty? Three things that they can do right now. Well, I would say yeah. just take a good look in the mirror. See where you are right now. Um, think about how a mentor could help you. Think about what you want from a mentoring relationship. But I would say, if you haven't talked to your mentor in a while, reach out, important, touch base. Um, I'd say, keep a journal. So that will help keep you on track. Even if you can't get your arms around it, to be able to, when you're with a journal, you're, you can be authentic with yourself. And so um, to make sure that you're thinking about develop, ask yourself the question about your development. In what ways have I grown? Have I stopped right now? What things could I do that would enhance my performance, my capability, my growth, my development? So I would say definitely um, work on yourself, even if you yeah. can't be in contact, even if you can't be in contact with a, a mentor, prepare yourself. Beautiful. Beautiful. And third. Oh, I have one more. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to toss that back to you. I thought I did three, but go ahead. Okay, so I would say um, take a look at our book, which is Bridging Differences for Better Mentoring. Oh, but also, here are, <laughs> here, here are two questions to ask yourself and, and to journal about. One is, what have I always wanted to learn? And the other is, what kind of leader have I always wanted to be and what's prevented myself from, what's prevented me from getting there? And that will lead you to some learning goals. If you do not currently have a mentoring relationship, 
now is a great time to think about who might have some of the skills that you want to learn from and to start having some mentoring dates to see if you can try to find somebody who would be a good mentor for you. We are all using virtual technology, so it's a great time to do that as well. Um, so Lois, final thoughts. Well, my final thought is now that you mentioned our book, um, you know, we always have books that we say, again, someday I'm going to read it, someday I'm going to read it. Our book will help you in this whole process of reflection, this whole process of how can I be a better person? How can I be a better friend? How can I be a better, con uh, a, a, a better colleague? How can I be more authentic in how I show up at work and how I give others the space to be authentic? Perfect final words. Well, I want to thank everybody. First of all, I want to thank you um, for joining us and for being our uh, kickoff feature guest um, uh, in life and work. And um, also to uh, thank all, everybody for joining us. Next Monday at the same time, same place, um, we'll have Jennifer Conwe Conweiler, who um, is an expert in uh, communication between introverts and extroverts. And she'll be leading us through a discussion about how to bridge introversion and extroversion in our virtual mentoring efforts. So thank you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and uh, keep on mentoring. Have a great day. Thank you.